drugs and you know and i didn't really understand the opportunity and what ended up happening was um because the tv you know obviously was in german i would call my girlfriend at the time and she would basically send me dvd movies boxes of them like whatever i didn't care what it was send me eight movies send me 10 movies and um you know it, during the week if you watch three movies a night because you go to practice and then you sit in the apartment i would get through the movies very quickly you know quicker than i could get them and uh eventually i just started actually watching on these dvds the making of so if you remember like you know 10 years ago every dvd that used to come out they would give you a bonus dvd where it would have the making of or you know by, or right. or uh, uh alternate ending or and i became fascinated with that i became fascinated with how a movie was made versus the movie and uh i got to the point to where that's all i wanted to have her send me was movies i had a making of or two hour bonus or and i would watch that before watching the film and um uh, i just got the bug man i had an idea i was like god man i got these movie ideas i started writing in the me tablet when i would be on the road came home from the off season and wrote my first screenplay had no idea how to do that so i was writing like book form right <laughs> novel form in the me right. tablet the script it's funny now you know cuz I, i i you know i was just it just took over me man it was just something that was like be this is this is what you should be doing and uh i found joy in it and uh i didn't realize that the journey that that would take me on you know it was 3 years of you know leaving basketball and knocking on every door in LA and getting told no every time i knocked on the door not once but maybe sometimes twice sometimes i go out and they say hey hey tell dion come back in here real fast so i come back in yes sir what you think sir yeah uh no again <laughs> right <laughs> hey come back uh, twice get yeah. a no again <laughs> yeah i mean but it, that's what it felt like you know what i mean and um You know, it was just a struggle, man, but something just kept burning in me like, "Dude, you can do this." And you know, through that adversity is actually how I became who I am today and started building what I'm building now, you know, which is I figured out, man, like these guys won't give me a chance. I can't get in the door as a black filmmaker. I can't get in the door as a black writer. So I just decided I'm going to just write my own script and finance my own movie and go try to figure out how to make it. Right. And uh um, that's what happened and I took me another 3 years. And uh finally I was on the set of a movie getting ready to make my own film and I got that movie done and it came out extremely well and then people were like, "Well, do you know how to do distribution?" <laughs> so that became a whole another, you know, the next step. Um but I say this to say that you have to have those moments of adversity and you have to have those moments of failure. and you have to be able to stay steadfast in everything that it is that you're doing in order to accomplish the goal that you're actually seeking to get, right? right. Um if I had not went through everything I went through and it's easy to say it now cuz you can see the other side of the fence, right? When you're like, "Oh, I see it over there." Right. I can just, you know, I, now I can see where I need to go. So I'm like, "Oh, there's the finish line. Let me run over there." But before when you kind of tracking and you making your own trail through the weeds, you can't see it. You know what I mean? But exactly. you have to go through that. You have to 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 endure the cold winters. You have to endure the nose. You have to endure not having no gas in your car. You have to endure not being able to pay your rent in your car repossessed. You got to go through all of those things when you're fighting to try to get to that dream, right? Because once you get closer to it, not only do you appreciate it more, but at the same time you understand that once you obtain it how to actually keep it right. and that's the, that's the biggest thing, thing. You, right yeah yeah cuz everybody can get it but the idea is like can you can you maintain it can you hold it can you harness it you know what i mean right. so you which means which means you can't you can't start at go and jump to the finish line Right, and a lot exactly. of people are, are a lot of people in jail for that, right? You like oh, <laughs> true, true. <laughs> you like oh, I'm just oh, okay, I can just get it this way. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you go to jail. Right? Or or I can just get it this way or no, it just collapsed right between, you know, right in your hands. So you got to have something that you build the foundation to be able to stand on before you can have it the right way. Exactly. Man, that that's that's an amazing story. 
And then that I guess that's why you have that in your bio. God works. Ask me on proof. Um, just that story, man. Yeah, that's it, man. I mean, in every way, you know what I mean? In every way. For me, you know, I've been through a lot. I've seen a lot. I, you know, like I said, it's been, um, it's, it's a very hard role when you're trucking, especially, you know, when you're, when you're African American, you know, we, we already have a disadvantage in, 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 in the marketplace, right? Because, you know, I don't know, but, I could point to 10 of my friends right now and none of us had a father figure that owned a business. None of us had a father figure that had a degree. Nobody got the keys, you know, to the Porsche at 20. I I don't know any of them, right? So what happens is as you begin to learn business as an African-American young man in, in this world, normally you get a shot once and then if you fail at the shot, you don't get another shot again, right? So we have to learn, we have to learn how to, you know, teach ourselves how to do business. And sometimes you learn the wrong way and then you got to start back over. And sometimes you did this the wrong way. You got, you know, I got an attitude with what dude and this. Like you got to, it's a very, very tough situation to be in. But what's beginning to happen now are, is that there's a lot of African-American businessmen that are successful that are now giving back to communities so young kids could actually see someone do business. You know what I mean? And, and right, have right. some some reminisce of, like you, for instance, like you started a podcast. You had to go learn how to do that, right? You had right. to understand how to, how to set your listeners up. But what time do you come on? What time do you go off? When does it air, right? right. How do you, if it gets popular, you know, how does it make money? How do you do time shares? How do you sell commercials? All of that is a business, right? That right. that probably 90% of kids coming out of high school or college still don't know. They got to actually try to figure it out on their, on their own. So I just think, you know, um, our journey and, and people like ourselves that are, you know, being successful or finding success in what we do, you know, being able to give back and tell our stories is, is, is part of the... Uh, part of the give back program but at the same time that's why I always say God works man and I'm proof you yeah. know cause I didn't know nothing <laughs> <laughs> and, I didn't and, know man, nothing man right and look at where you are now I mean yeah. once again we're talking to Dion Taylor director of traffic starring Omar Epps Paula Patton it's gonna be coming out April the 24th I believe is that correct April 27th April, uh, April 27th, 27th everywhere man yeah okay. yeah definitely Go watch it. Go watch it. Um, before I let you go, I wanted to ask you real quick your your thoughts on the current state of the NBA. Um, you know how how do you feel about it? Do you do you watch it as much as you used to? Yeah, I, I, I mean I'm a diehard NBA fan, man. I think it's I think that the league and the game is incredible. Um, I think the athletes have been. Um, I think the athletes are the best they've ever been in the entire <laughs> since the NBA has been started. Um, some of these guys are phenomenal. Uh, I mean, Russell Westbrook, you know, LeBron James has always been a freak of nature. Um, but now looking at some of these guys, I'm like, yo, what, what is that? Like, yeah, yeah, you what, know, uh, what position that person play? <laughs> yeah, like the Greek, like the Greek freak, right? Like these guys, you got to be. You know, I thought Kevin Durant was crazy. I see this dude. I said, "Look at this man!" Right? Like, it's. I think it's insane. What I think is, um, what I'm wondering and, and trying to pay attention to is, you know, obviously we don't want these guys to not be able to come directly out of college or come out of high school to go to the league. Right? They've already kind of stopped the high school thing. Um, but what I'm what I'm trying to figure out is with the mass amount of money that these kids are getting and coming from impoverished neighborhoods like me and you were just talking about, I just would love to see them adapt some type of program into the curriculum or into, you know, when you see these kids out of phenoms that perhaps might come out of high school and go directly to the league or quote one year in college and come out, I would love to see some type of, in other words, these kids get a... Um, uh, they get put in a program, right? So the same right, way right. the AAU says, oh, 
right? Let me just say it to this way. The same way the AAU says, yo, these 100 kids right here are the next ones to go, right? The top 100, right? I feel like automatically, like, those kids should be pushed into a program through their school to where they start learning how to manage money. They start learning how to manage friends. They start getting business etiquette classes because they're advanced in a, in a different way, right? So it's the same thing if, if um, you know, when you was in school, they used to, when I was in high school, they had like the gate program. Remember that? Right, right, right. So yeah, yeah, I remember that. The, 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 gate, the gate program was like all the kids that was like smarter than you. Right? <laughs> they, yeah, right. They go they go to school they go to school an hour before you because they take a different class and they can get more credits because they test it higher. Right? Right. And to me I said, Man, well wouldn't it be interesting to create a world like that for some of these kids that are phenoms in a different way? You know what I mean? You get a right, kid exactly. like Kevin Garnett that's in the ninth, tenth grade, seven feet tall, scoring fifty points a game, you know he's getting ready to get Fifty million dollars in three years, so he should be in a program, or his parents should have to uh, have to attend a program to where they could actually deal with the financial, you know, responsibilities that these kids are going to get, and and certain amount of money needs to be put up. So if your mom or your dad don't understand how it goes, that money is put into a certain you know, account to where you could only get it when you're 21 or, you know what I mean? I just right. think it's so many things. It's, it's that important. Because, yeah, what, what, what's crazy is, and what people don't know is the turnover rate for the NBA. See, that's what they keep, that's what they keep a secret, which is every year, right? The, every year there's a draft, there's 70 kids put out of the league. Wow. So, right? So, so all of a sudden, you're in a situation where you got a one or you got a $2 million deal and you've been in the league for one or two seasons and now you find yourself out the league trying to fight for a position in the D League or the G League, right? You're yeah. running out of money, right? And now you turn 24 and you're completely broke and you went through that system. What happens? They don't talk about them guys. You know what I mean? Right. They don't. They don't. They. It's a. It's a thousand. It's two thousand. It's three thousand of kids walking around like y'all was in the league for a year. Well, I was in the league for two years. So, you know, I just think the the, the understanding the business of the NBA should be something that they should, you know, push forward with some of these kids that are coming out of, you know, college and high school. Yeah, I think that would that would be amazing because to have that much money. And it and it and it happened so fast, and then you got friends, and then you got people that are calling you. You got that person that's like, "Hey, you remember we grew up together? Remember that one time I let you borrow that bike? I mean, it, it is yep. at a million miles an hour. <laughs> that's right. There's people coming yep. at you, but yep. I think that's that, that's a great idea. Um, do you think having a junior basketball league like Lavar Ball has has suggested? Do you think that's a good idea to have a middle ground between college and an NBA? Is that what the, I, I didn't hear that? Is that what the D, ain't that what the G League is? Well, they they're talking about doing something called the Junior Basketball League, which would be like those guys. I guess it would be those guys in between, like college or co- high school and college. Like if they don't want to go to college, they don't want to go overseas, but they want to have like another. A central, I guess, uh, area where they can play and develop and then possibly get drafted like from there. I don't know. It seems like a whole lot of leagues happening, right? I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. You know, I don't know, man. I think, you know, I think the, um, maybe, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I would think that's exactly what the competitive nature of the, of the D League was supposed to represent, right? Right, right? It's like you didn't make it to the league so now you got to go into this league and you got to level up and ball up to be able to make it back to the NBA, right? Right. Exactly. To me, it feels like if you start putting kids in another in another hyperbaric chamber that they can't never get out of, <laughs> right? So now you just True. got all these leagues running with these guys. I think it's entertainment. You know, I think that's also what the CBA used to be. Yes. Right? Yes. Like the CBA, 
kind of represented that world where like 